मैम सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट वी आर अनेबल टू हेयर यू Thank you, sir. Am I able? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on the book of uh, Code of Honor, third chapter. We would be studying on people. Okay. So, before we could begin our class with, can I request one of us to lead us in prayer? Uh, I think it's been long time. Jeffina, are you online? Can you lead us in prayer? Yes. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class that we are about to attend. Lord, I place everyone in your hand, especially our teacher. I place her on your hand. Fill us with understanding. Fill us with your knowledge. Yes, fill us Lord. with an understanding heart. Fill us with the presence of the Holy Spirit, so that as we listen to all this, we apply it in our life and we yes, preach this Lord. great good news to everyone who's around Amen. us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. So, let's all turn to chapter three on people. Christian ministry is all about building people. Ministry is to do with people, not with um, any building or any uh, uh, multi-story uh, enterprises, or uh, it's not kind of an administration tool or building an organization or uh, trying to exercise or even management. But then ministry is to do with people. It's to serve people. That's why God has appointed us. It's not we think like, okay, I'm serving God. So how do we serve God? Serving God is to serve people. Serving God to serve people. So uh, again, we need to minister to people, serve people. That's why. So Christian ministry is to do with people. We cannot say I'm not good with people and I cannot be among them. Uh, so everything I will operate at the back end. No, ministry is to interact people, to solve people problem, to serve them, to be there with them. Sometimes you may have to interact one on one. Sometimes you need to address a large crowd. So when God has called you, he will also give you the grace to move ahead. Okay, so we don't have to run away, but then God will give us the grace. We need to trust God. Yes, there are stages of growth that we would be uh, uh, going through in our life, uh, but then it is for good. God will equip us. God will give us the required grace, boldness, the skill and talent that has been needed in the area where God has called us when we trust God and step into it. We see God's hand over us, God moving in and through us. And also ministry is all about, you know, touching lives, touching many people. How? Uh, by serving them, by meeting their needs, by listening to them and praying for them, taking their request to God and praying and interceding. See, this is what we do. So sharing God's love and this power to see, uh, uh, to see, uh, uh, to see like, you know, uh, uh, bondages are broken, sickness are healed, uh, uh, to see uh, people's life transformed, people have been nurtured and uh, brought into the Christ likeness and his image has been formed in them. So this is what ministry is all about, sharing the good news of Christ, transforming each and everyone's life, staying with people, praying for them, uh, being with them during their difficult time and journeying with them is what the ministry is all about. So as we understand this and I'm sure many of us would have already started to uh, uh, you know work in those areas because that is the grace that God gives us when he calls us he fills us with his love and uh, ministry is birthed out of that love that we carry for God it is not that we uh, we thought I need to have I'm impressed by somebody else's ministry so I want to build a similar ministry like them no it's not that ministry is birthed when we are filled with the love of God, when God has rescued us from our sinful nature, when we have this understanding, Lord, you know, much is loved when much has been forgiven. 
Lord, I'm a sinner, but you forgave me. You have redeemed me. You have set me free. And here I am available to serve you, serve your people, to serve in the area, all the area where you have redeemed me. I want to be there as a witness among those people. Then you set yourself available for those people. Because God has called you, God has equipped you, God has enriched you with that grace that you could do. So you will start see yourself flowing uh, automatically in that area, in that grace. You'll be flowing in that area to minister, to talk to. You'd be available 24-7, keep yourself available. And um, you will never go tired in that area because God has given you the grace to minister to them, to guide the people, uh, um, you know, in that area. It can be anybody, people in the professional. You may be called uh, to the youth, to work among the youth. You may be called to work among the um, businessmen. Or you may be uh, called to work among the urban. You may be called to work among the rural, or you may be called to work among the set of a denomination. Whatever area God has called you you will see that God has given you the grace and you're flowing in that area. And you see how God is empowering you and also the people, uh, uh, you know, uh, among whom God has raised you. Okay. So this is what ministry is all about, building people, nurturing them, listening to them, and, you know, rejoicing the work that God has given you. And also we see uh, growth happens in stages as we journey together. It's not like once, uh, you know, the minute you step into the ministry, you will not see yourself on a big, pulpit or you know preaching to the crowds but then it happened step by step and it is very important for us to understand that uh, God is leading us God is uh, uh, you know God is leading us God has called me and this is the word that God has given me that's why we need to document uh, we need to write down uh, write on everything God has placed us uh, like from the time God has called us the scripture that he's placed in our life because in the ministry not all the season will be like the bed of roses. We would come across certain situations which is not very pleasant. We may question ourselves, did really God call us? Or is this what really I want to do in my life? Or is this the area that I need to serve in? So when we write down these promises, whatever God has given us certain season, it will speak to us and it will give us the grace. It will also increase uh, the patience that is needed to serve see the spiritual growth and uh, maturing in us and also among the people whom we are ministering in. So what I mean to say is the journey is in a stage. We need to have patience. We need to see how the Lord is working in and through us. So when we start uh, journaling all the uh, stages that we go through, how God is working in and through us, so it, it would be easy for us to review uh, how Lord is leading, uh, how, uh, how we are journeying in with God, and we see ourselves grow stage by stage. And um, very important is, uh, can I request one of us to turn to book of john gospel of john chapter 16 verse 1 4 and 12 okay to save our time what we can do is uh, there's a list of people here, right? Like we have in order, Anita, Aradna, you know, whoever, please pick the scripture and you can start reading because we can save on time. It is very important for us to read the scripture because scripture is what will change us. It will transform us because the word of God has power. Okay, so can I request it? Are you ready? Ma'am, John chapter 16 verses. One. Then four and then twelve. John chapter 16, verses 1. All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. One and four. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you, I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. 
and then 12 ma'am yes i have much more to say to you more than you can now bear thank you thank you sir so this means that we have to uh, uh, purposefully do our preaching and teaching to our congregation because even they grow in step by step they grow in stages so we need to understand our congregation according to their need we need to prepare the sermon so how we know that we interact with them when we interact with them and when we look upon their life we know which stage they are in and we sit in the presence of god and uh, you know and uh, then plan out our sermons uh, before in hand at apc we plan out sermons at least 6 months ahead or sometimes a year we plan out throughout the year we write on series of teaching sometimes okay why to build the congregation in the word and in the spirit so we need to know the stage the season that a congregation a congregation are and then prepare the sermon it shouldn't be like ha huh, just because i need to uh, share the word let me share something no you need to journey with the congregation you we need to understand what is they need how we can uh, develop how we can get them equipped in the word this is what god has placed in our heart to equip the people in the word to get them to get us and also them rooted in the word of god so we need to understand our congregation prepare the sermon and teach them so that uh, we can see our congregation grow spiritually and matured in the um, in the way god has planned for them and we see this growth that happens by stage by stage we see people uh, take up new levels and they grow in spiritual maturity and we see their lives been transformed this is what our ministry should be we need to see people uh, you know accepting the word being equipped in the word grow in the word and in spirit and see their lives been transformed as the people life been transformed you see church growth happens automatically you see leaders have been raised automatically so we need to remember we cannot preach what people um, we cannot preach to them uh, just like that but then we need to prepare ourselves we need to prepare the word in season and then come and share to them and expect god to move among them as we do this we should also be very careful we should not preach what people in the congregation wanted because um, in the congregation many people will suggest many uh, things like one may say pastor as this is the end times and see we see a lot of uh, uh, um, signs happening in and around us so can you please preach on end times maybe somebody else comes and say uh, god is calling me to disciple and evangelize uh, people can you please take up these topics and share on discipleship or share on evangelism so there'll be many opinion among the congregation people who will come and give you the suggestions of what message to be preached and thought every week but then that is how, that doesn't work that way we need to sit in the presence of god we need to see the benefit of our church congregation overall and then plan our sermons prepare it and then come and teach to them so that uh, we can see our church together will transition from uh, a season to season stage to stage they will grow spiritually and more matured in the lord and the next point we see is honor everyone honor everyone can i request uh, jeffina can you please read romans 12 10 and uh, ruben can you take up matthew chapter 10 verse 42 and zeli toli maybe next you can read okay i will give you the scripture romans chapter 12, 12. verse 10 love on love one another with brotherly affection giving precedence and showing honor to one another thank you ruben ruben tamang okay so what happened okay so we must uh 
Matthew 10, 42. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall be by no means lose his reward. So we must learn to treat everyone with respect, regardless of their gender, social, or you know, the education or uh, culture background or the age, small or big, we must learn to respect everyone and treat everyone without any partiality because that is not from God. God is not partial. So we need to treat everyone. Uh, we should not discriminate between the rich and the poor. Treat everyone the same. Give everyone the first place, the place of order. Even if it is a little child, respect the child and speak to them. When we do this, we are honoring God with the way we treat people because they are God's children. They are God's children. In God's kingdom, the simplest service that we do, the smallest one, because uh, 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 to each one of them, is as though we have done it unto the God. So in God's kingdom, the simple service done to some least, because they are part of God's family, will not go unnoticed by God. We will receive the reward that God has in store for each one of us. So we need to keep that in our mind and move ahead. Next is honor leaders, elders, and fathers. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 7. Zeli, can you read? Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Amen. So we are called to give double honor to those who are our spiritual leaders, especially those who are serving in the ministry. We must hold our spiritual leaders, elders, fathers with great respect. Though they may not expect it, but then we need to honor them because God has placed them as a leader over us. Though times may change, times may change, things may change, but we must continue to esteem those who are walking ahead of us in this journey with faith and with great respect. We may also grow in the word. We may grow to be a good leader. But no matter how our growth is in the Lord, but we should not uh, um, we should not be from respecting our elders. We should not be of from uh, keep away from respecting our pastors, our, our, fa our spiritual fathers who led us to God. They may be the simple person, they may be retired, they may have grown old and weak now, but still our respect to them should be much greater than what was before, but never reduce in any way. We may, as young, youngsters, we may, uh, uh, you know, be very tech savvy or we may be more efficient than them. But then never forget to honor and respect our leaders, elders, pastors or fathers who, who led us to Christ in a very simple way. We need to give them the all respect and honor that uh, you know goes with them because God has asked us to honor our elders, honor them with all our heart, with high esteem. And uh, it gives them the preference and priority rather than making ourselves equal with them. No matter how high we grow, we cannot keep ourselves equal to them. But then we need to honor them. So next is show no partiality. That is not from God. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 21. Who can read? Brother Lubega? Brother Lubega, can you turn to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 21? Today is a big chapter, so we need to complete this in time. Okay, Sid, go ahead. 1 Timothy 5, 7. The elders who rule well will be counted worthy of double honor, especially those 
two labels in the word and doctor and so this is a very important instruction that has been uh, that we need to keep in mind as we uh, you know serve god and serve his people i'll just mute somebody's mic is on i'm just muting it yeah so we need to keep in mind it is very important uh, uh, to keep in mind and uh, relate god's people without any partiality in all our decision making uh, towards people we should not uh, without any personal prejudice, uh, prejudice or without partiality as paul uh, uh, paul instructs timothy the young timothy to lead and to serve god's people in this manner uh, without any partiality to minister and serve them because uh, Uh, in ministry we will have different people coming in okay with different high status or low status we don't look at people with what status they come in uh, uh, with what background they carry and come we look at people as the children of god and we serve them in that we we look at people everyone are in the same level ground so we minister to them and we serve them uh, without any partiality we honor everyone this is the practice that we need to keep in our mind and serve along with them no matter how gifted how talented one may be but then we treat everyone with honor we treat everyone equally in god's kingdom the next point is be grateful say thank you often very very important uh, we must learn to be grateful to lord for the people whom he has placed around us just expressing thanks to the lord for people indicates that we realize what we are not because of our own great effort what we are in the ministry but with god's grace and god has also given us the help through people around us so as we are thankful to god we also should appreciate people who are around us and be thankful to them we see in many instances paul in the ministry being thankful to the fellow believers uh, you know he has been very thankful to them for the ministry that they have been planting for the ministry that paul is able to plant in and through them in certain area and how he moved them and how you know they carried the gospel uh, to the ends of the earth so he is very thankful to each and every fellow worker he writes to them he greets them uh, he also to encourage others to appreciate them for the good work they are doing see genuinely they have been thankful well uh, this is very important and uh, what uh, what is shared in confidence must stay in confidence in the ministry people come toward you with great confidence seeking help as a pastor they come to you and they share their heart to you so so that you know uh, we whatever they shared in confidence uh, seeking your help or seeking your prayer we need to be with them keep up their trust and not to use those instances or those scenarios as an example when you're sharing the message to everyone we should be very careful in this area or even if you're bringing a correction okay that point i'll come later but here we are talking about the confidence when people come and share their life stories with you is only to pray, pray for them to minister to them to help them and not for us to take that scenario take that circumstance and preach out in the congregation we should not do that as a leader as a servant of god we should be completely mindful of other people their situation so yes we have seen many people use instances scenarios like that so when we can use we can use the situation the scenarios on one on one discussion on a small gathering on a conference setup when you're teaching okay we can also use it without taking the person's name without taking person's name just use it for the learning purpose or to you know uh, bring a point to it 
and also make sure when you're using the scenario or the instance or to illustrate it at some point make sure the uh, that person is not there in that conference that person is not there in the meeting you got it so that that person is not uh, affected it should be used one on one and if there's any testimony uh, to share or you can ask permission with that person do you want me to share this testimony among the congregation which would be a blessing okay if that person say yes you can use my testimony uh, use my uh, situation as a testimony you can share it but uh, don't let my name so with uh, so because you have taken the permission from that person without taking the person's name you can share the testimony with the congregation for the glory of god but we have to take the person's permission okay very very important so what has been shared in confidence should be kept in confidence and how do we correct people lovingly we do not correct people taking up the situation preaching it as a sermon front of all the congregation trying to point out one person and trying to bring correction no we never do that do not use your pulpit time for any of these things pulpit time should be given only to the word of god because we see many uh, pastors or ministry leaders they may want to uh, correct certain people in the church maybe there are two or three people going against pastor or doing some unhealthy things in the church when you want to bring a correction or you want to uh, um, bring a fear among the other people not to behave like them uh, uh, you know uh, directly using the sermon hour to speak about people's mistake and uh, trying to correct people during the sermon where everyone uh, would get to know that is something that we need to be mindful of not to do this sermon our preaching art is to preach the word of god only give your pulpit time only to god and not to any of these things correcting people should be done one on one always we can appreciate and give a plaud in public we can appreciate them in the church but then when we correct when we bring correction it has to be personally done on one on one lovingly very this is a very sensitive matter because we are working with the lives of people we need to handle it very um, very cautiously correcting people is something very difficult i uh, personally i have seen in the bible college we um, when we minister to our students we see them grow they are with us for at least 2 to 3 years uh, we see how their character change okay we not only teach the word but we also develop the students in their character so when we see certain things are not very well with them you know even when we sit personally one on one we do it in such a way that you know only that person will get to know what we discussed what we have noticed and when we lovingly put it across and see what has been expected from them and you know how they can change how their life will be a blessing when we explain it to them when we put it across in a very loving way in a gentle way that gives sufficient time for the person to accept that correction and also to implement in their life and learn to grow outgrow that mistake and we seen people change their life this type of correction worked everywhere it works with everyone then we trying to correct that person front of everyone putting that person into shame on getting that person embarrassed is not a good thing and also uh, if in the ministry we're talking from the ministry front front if we see um, any uh, uh, like if uh, you know uh, uh, to when we bring a correction in a ministry leader who was serving under us okay uh, we have to see why they are not able to serve well 
is it because of the lack of any skill or any resources we need to find out if there's a lack of any skill or any resources we see to it that you know there's a proper uh, uh, training given to that person and you know the resources have been provided so that we can see that person grow in the ministry area but then if you see that person um, a person is not able to perform well is because of his own or her own laziness or unwilling to work or lost interest or because of pride or conflict with people and they showcase a bad attitude then there is a correction which need to be brought in and this will again be done one on one trying to understand why what when give them a certain i mean give them some time to correct and show themselves uh, improve in that area but then if you still see there's no improvement the person is continuing with the same kind of attitude then we may have to take a decision to release that person in the call of god into hands of god and ask the god to work in that person and uh, you know so that um, his attitude may not affect others in the ministry so that uh, you know this works when we correct people in uh, private we see to that personally uh, this has helped many of them to build and change from the uh, correct their mistake and improve and also uh, when we applaud people we need to do it in public because that is the right way to honor some good work this will also um, influence others to do the good things in the lord's kingdom so i have a personal strategy for handling difficult situation have a personal strategy for handling difficult situation so in proverbs 19 verse 20 says listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days so it is very important that we continually learn from the difficult situation that we faced in our life the mistakes that we did the hard path we took we need to learn from that so the lessons that we learn in this situation will help us to handle the uh, handle the situation that we come across in future it is very very important and as we go through certain hard times we need to develop a strategy when we sit in the presence of god sometimes god gives us a strategy how to deal with uh, many scenarios it can be with people uh, many uh, see each we cannot deal every one in our congregation in the same way we need to uh, uh, we need to understand each one's background and we need to handle them in that way so that uh, we understand uh, their background the situation what they are coming from so be, uh, with their understanding you can handle them so when we uh, uh, see for example if um, yes we need we should not be partial we should be uh, equal uh, i mean we should give everyone uh, everyone are on the same level ground so when we keep all this in mind at the same time there are some difficult situation that may arise in the ministry okay uh, one situation that comes to my mind i'll just share it with you in our bible college uh, like yes all our students had to take up an exam everyone should appear for the midterm exam to the final exam uh, this is very important it is mandatory but there was a situation where one of a student after a very long time you know uh, she was in her 50s she joined the college and she had this fear of examination she had this fear of examination first she is in her 50s second she had some weakness from a past she was not uh, uh, she didn't go to a regular school she was home schooled because of this fear of you know uh, examination fear within her so personally she had some challenges that she's been carrying and she was also on medication uh, so she was uh, taking some pills uh, um, with uh, related to some psychological effect so knowing a background she didn't appear for a first exam so this was a concern to me i called her up 
And she said, ma'am, I cannot come. I cannot give my exam. I'm very scared. This is not something now, but this is what has been affected with me from my school days. So same kind of fear is holding her back. But then she's a very good student. She genuinely want to study the world. Despite a difficult situation, she used to travel more than 20 to 25 kilometers every day to a Bible college. And she used to be the first one to come in the morning and study. She's been genuinely doing everything, but it was surprising that she didn't appear for her exam. When I spoke to her, she said, ma'am, uh, if it is uh, OK, can I continue the course without the exam? Or I will discontinue the course because I'm not able to give my exam. So in this case, what should we do? Class, you all suggest me what we can do. Yes, yes, Brother Lupita, please go ahead. I I think the, the I think it is a point where you've got to talk to the authorities over you, and then I think the body can take the decision. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Oh, can I say something? Yes, brother. Uh, there are two things to be done here. Yes. One, you can take an exam by asthma question i didn't you get will you have the exam script. sorry sorry you will get an exam are you with me yes yes brother Enoch, you can go ahead please brother Enoch. Hello? Yes, please. Go ahead, brother. Okay. I said there are two things to be done here. Uh, uh -huh. Number one, either you talk to the school authority to waive our exams, or mm -hmm. you will have the exam script with you without giving to her, and you'll be asking her a questions on the exams to actually know if she also know what is going on the school what yes she have is taught thank you thank you brother next uh divya you would like to share yeah uh yes ma'am i was just sh uh, sharing the same thing like uh, uh ask questions like an interview like without her knowledge you know you can ask uh you know practically um uh, how she can apply those concepts that's right yeah, that has that's been right. more than the class. Thank you. That is Thank right. You. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Enoch. Thank you, Divya. Yes, Sid? Ma'am, keeping the ladies' problem and keeping the protocols of the APC Barber College, what should be done? Like, we can do some kind of a examination for her personally, which will not be looking like an examination, but like a kind of a logical reasoning, some kind of a situation is giving what we do in this kind of situation. If a person is coming for a counseling, what will you do to her? What would be if you what will you do if you are in this kind of situation? This kind of questions can be asked and it can also fill the criteria of the examination. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Brother Paul, please go ahead. Uh, to me, I think also we can pray against the spirit of, of sp fear. Some Jeez. things are just demonic, so we can pray to cancel that spirit of fear, and then the person comes back to normal. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Excellent. I think everyone gave a valid point. Exactly. Exactly. We can take up everyone's point. Actually, uh, how we handled is exactly the same, just like how you said. So I, I told her, please come over to college next day. I said, you come. Don't give your exam. Just come. She just came. Then I asked her the questions uh, of the previous exam. I just asked her, what is the answer for this? She could answer the, all the questions in the question paper. 
she could answer but then just this fear that was there within her exam fear that i cannot write i would not uh, meet the expectation i will be thrown out of the college if i'm not able to or what if i score less marks i am incapable in my studies you know all these fear was there within her that uh, that it's not like now she's been battling it from a younger age onwards that's why she was not able to go to a school or to a college and now with that earnest heart to study the word at the age of 50 she has joined the college well we worked we said okay you will not take this exam but then join our college but then we cannot be uh, admitting a student without the exam as well. And as you all suggested, yes, I took permission from our management so that the person can give an exam after a week later. So I thought I can prepare her within that week. OK, so I started ministering to her preparing, talking to her, counseling, and then we prayed over her, as Brother Paul said, to bring out that fear, to cast that fear out from her and then after a week, we prepared a special paper and on all the subjects. It shouldn't be the same paper we are repeating, okay? Keeping in mind, there's no partiality, okay? So we gave her the paper and she answered. In fact, she scored more than everyone. And we could see the improvement within her. In next six months, I mean, not next six months, in next few months, two or three months, the final exam would come. That was the first exam all her life she appeared and when she wrote each and every exam with much fear much trembling she prayed and she appeared for the exam and she was excellent she scored the highest among everyone and by time she moved from first year to second year we see lord working in her she stopped uh, this uh, fear of examination was out of her she could write an exam with boldness, with courage. And we also see as she journeyed till the third year, she stopped with the medical pills. Lord also worked on in the area where she was going through like depression or anxiety, the psychological effect. And she was on the medication. All her pills were stopped. She could work and she could handle herself without any pills. So she came out as a testimony when she graduated from her college that she stopped with all her pills and she's a, she conquered all her fears and she's able to study. She's able to give in her exam and she was the highest. Okay, so there are certain situations where we need to handle it in a different way. It's not partiality. We are not showing any partiality, but we are working with the love of God. We are, we are showing God's love to that person and helping that person to handle the difficult situation. Yes, there are sometimes, so in, in similar way, okay, it can be different scenarios in a church setup. Okay, so when we handle each one, so we should handle them according to the difficult situation, what they are going through. They are journeying in. We may uh, we may not be able to uh, share that with anyone because that's personal. That's one on one. But as a pastor, as a ministry leader, you know that person difficulty. Okay, so you we need to be a little more gracious, little more kind, little more loving towards that person to overcome the challenge what that person is going through. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, the next is, do not be a boss over God's people. Very, very important. Very important. First Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. Can I request one of us to please read? First Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. The elders who are among you, I exhort, who am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also partaker of glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those who, those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very important. We need to be very clear that you know, as a spiritual leader, 
we need to serve because Jesus himself showed us the example. I've come here to serve and not to be served. So as a leader, we need to serve people, but not expect them to serve us. There are some situations we have seen. I'm not very sure of abroad, but then in India, we see some pastors. They need a escort, four or five people to escort them to the pulpit. You know, we also see... Um, you know, they, uh, the ministry leaders who serve along with them, ca one carries the laptop, one carry their Bible, one carry their uh, water bottle, uh, you know, uh, everything. They carry it for them when they themselves can carry it. So as a ministry leader, this is something that we uh, instruct our students, our students like, do everything, whatever possible by your effort, when everything you can do it, do it for yourself. We should not expect people to get things for us. When we can carry our own water bottle, we can carry our, our laptop, our Bible, our pad. Let's do it all by ourselves, not expecting others to get things done for us. These are simple things. And we don't have to be escorted by hundreds of people. We don't have to be, even when we're having a fellowship with them. You see... Um, in a big conference or a meeting, you see the man of God need to be given a special place, a special table for their lunch, dinner served, and, you know, the congregation and all the other side. Okay, pastor should not be interrupted by the other people. No, we should not be that way. As a leader, we need to be one among people. We need to fellowship with people. We need to move among them. And as a leader, we also should make sure that we take our uh, lunch plate or dinner plate or uh, have food at the end. First serve our congregation, first serve our people. As a leader, see to it that everyone are nourished. And then we, we sit for our lunch. We, as much as possible, we need to avoid that first place, first priority, special treatment. Not needed. We are just here to serve them. God has appointed us to serve them. We don't have to use people to get our things done. What is personal? We cannot ask, okay, I'm the pastor. I need some help at home. Can you all please come to clean, serve me at home? I need some, I have a guest, so I need somebody to uh, babysit my children or uh, take care of, um, you know, our being. No, nothing for a personal need. We can take help for our church work. We have a special event coming. We need help. Can I get some volunteers to serve in the church? Serving in the church is serving God. We can do that. But nothing to be done with keeping a personal agenda to do our personal work, no. We should be very careful not to use people, but we need to serve God's people. And also, we need, as a leader, we need to set our life as a godly example in Christ-likeness to serve God and to serve his people. Okay? Um, yes. Do not control, do not manipulate. Very, very important. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 says, Not that we have dominion over your faith, but uh, our fellow workers for your joy, by your faith you stand. So as pastor, as ministry leader, we, uh, there is a fine line between protecting God's people and controlling them. We are here to serve them. We are here to nurture them, build them in the word and spirit and in faith. But we cannot control them. That is demonic. Controlling people is demonic. We cannot demand people to attend only our church, to listen to our decisions uh, without pastor's decision. Um, uh, the church congregation or the, uh, the members in the church cannot search for a job, cannot relocate, cannot get married, uh, um, cannot purchase anything for their house without the pastor's knowledge. We should not be in control of their personal life, any in this area. As a uh, servant of God, as a ministry leader, we should only spiritually feed our church. We should not be making decisions for another person. 
we cannot control and manipulate people's decision by using a threat that's the reason you should ask pastor so that when we pray when you seek our decision god will bless you do not use such a, a, a manipulating messages or uh, or to control them that is all spiritual witchcraft we need to give freedom to people we need to direct them to god in their own personal life we cannot judge uh, we cannot ask people whom they should marry whom they should not be getting married to that is their decision we should give them the freedom we should give them the freedom if somebody uh, wants to search for i mean looking out for a job pray for them and bless them as them freely go ahead and search for a job we cannot hold people to ourselves we cannot be in control of their life what is happening in their life we should give them the freedom we should allow them to see god and walk in freedom in every area of their life we should only be there to feed god's word to people nurture them in the word of god and allow them to grow them building their relationship with god when we give the freedom to god a uh, freedom to people uh, to make their own choice in their life this is what the bible teaches us when we do that we see we see that uh, you know they nurture and they grow in the freedom in uh, in spirit we see that they make decisions on their own even if they mistake they learn from their mistake and we minister to them in love and not pointing out their mistake what went wrong what they could have done nothing most of the time in our church when uh, when we counsel or when we listen to people most of the time we tend to listen to them but we don't direct what they need to do we don't take decision for them we allow people to make decision on their own we only listen to them pray with them or if the decision is not very uh, uh, right when we know but we will not even tell them this decision is not right we can guide them to a counselor maybe you need some counseling a counselor may be able to decide better for you uh, i'm sure you need some advice you need a counselor's help to make decision in this area we can direct them to a counselor then we directly telling them what to do what not to do and when we lead them in the right way people grow people get matured people understand they may not understand you now but then they will understand as they grow but then they will grow in freedom they will be with us in a long journey okay uh, before we can go to the next point we will take a 10 minutes break now it's 53 so we will come by 10 3 minutes from now okay take a break and let's be back and we will continue on the same subject thank you god bless